Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm here with just an amazing young person, a junior in high school, Ella. And Ella, like a lot of kids, uh, you know, young adults, I've said there's a neural catastrophe happening because of cell phones and the, you know, your generation. You know, let's be honest, like just looking down at a cell phone all the time, gaming, then uh, on the computer all the time. So if someone is born with loose jointedness, like you probably inherited, you know, some loose jointedness from your mother who we've seen on some of these videos before your mother patients, who's also been a patient here. You know, so if you're somebody who's loose jointed to begin with, then you spend hours and hours on your cell phone. It's kind of neural catastrophe because the hours and hours on the cell phone, you know, then you get ligament injury or ligament laxity in your neck, and then your neck curve ends up to be like this instead of like this. Then you can get like disabling symptoms. And I know there was a point in time here, I'm gonna put this away, this is your current test results, mm -hmm. which we'll go over. But there was a point in time as a freshman in high school that you literally lived laying down because that's the only time you felt good, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, yes. Uh, my freshman year, um, I was only able to do um, half days at school. So um, I'd miss like my first period and then I'd come in um, for a very short period of time, I think it was around 10, 15 I'd go in. Um, and then for the rest of the time I was laying down. And then what, what were your symptoms and when did they start? Um, so my symptoms started um, December of my seventh grade year. Um, and it started as a viral illness, but my main symptoms were um, terrible, terrible fatigue. Um, nausea, dizziness, and brain fog, I'd say those are like the top four. And then uh, what led you to end up coming here and how was your response with the care here? Um, I'm lucky enough that my mom, um, we, we got a lot of misdiagnoses uh, as much as, as many, many other people do with CCI. Um, my mom did a lot of research and she got in contact with Dr. Patel at MUSC and there I was diagnosed with CCI. Um, and then from there we got in contact with a physical therapist named Susan Chalela. And Susan Chalela was actually the one who um, got us in contact with Dr. Hauser. And then when you got here, what, what did we find? And then what care did you get when you were here? And how was your response? Um, well, once we were here, uh, the main thing we found was um, the impact it had on my nerves, um, specifically the vagus nerve, I believe it was. I can't remember all of the details, it's, it's been a while. Um, but I think initially I was scheduled to have, I think it was 12 treatments. I ended up doing four, so I did respond very, very well. Um, I started with just the dextrose, we did the manganese, and then we also did the PRP once. Um, and just the difference it made for me, like even after one, was amazing. Like I remember waking up after like my first treatment and I was just already so much more energetic and like clear headed, you know, and it was amazing. And then after the four treatments, did you go back to school full time and what happened then? Um, yeah, so I continued at the school I was at, which was a private school. Um, it was a little bit more of a relaxed environment. But um, starting my junior year, I'm back in a public school. Um, I'm doing a lot more um, academically. I'm taking all AP and Cambridge classes. Um, I have a part-time job. Um, I'm in NHS, you know, I'm doing community service. Like, you know, I'm an active part of like both my school community and like my local community now. So you went from being pretty disabled to like basically a full life, yeah. would you say? And then, you know, I haven't seen you. When was the last time I saw you? Uh, sometime in 2020. <laughs> okay, so it's been a good couple of yeah. years since I saw you. Then what brings you back? Um, this is mostly for a touch-up. Um, I've been having just some mild brain fog, some more fatigue. Um, I've been having a lot of headache, especially like in the afternoons. Um, again, I've been having some issues with the like loss of sensation of pain in my hands and feet again. 
Um, so I'm back for mostly a touch up, especially because I'm going to college soon and I want to be in the best health I can for that. Here, this little, because you know, I always try to think of like why somebody regressed maybe mm -hmm. a little. Uh, so, yeah, you have a cell phone, you don't have a cell phone? I do. Okay, and then are you on it a lot, like looking down a lot? A good bit, yes. Um, Susan does do some pretty amazing work to help correct that. Um, and I think, you know, part of the underlying issue is that I do have, I was diagnosed with Ehlers Danlos. Yes. Um, so, prolotherapy does help a lot, but, you know, patients have to be responsible afterwards for, especially if you're diagnosed with Ehlers Danlos, you have a responsibility to, you know, um, be aware of that and be careful that you're not stretching your ligaments because when you have Ehlers Danlos, it's like an old rubber band. You can stretch it yeah. and it won't go back. So I think maybe this time I'm going to get a little bit more involved in your computer setup, just make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, we're inducing a cervical curve. And I know, you know, we haven't actually had a formal consult today, and mm -hmm. I appreciate you making this video. But I just want to do, uh, just go over some, you know, we did the neck vitals today, so I just want to go over a couple things. You see here where it says the MCA velocity, see where it says mm -hmm. 132 and 120. Mm -hmm. So the normal velocity of the arteries in the brain is like 65 centimeters per mm -hmm. second. So yours is twice normal. So yeah. that's one of the signs that, you know, the brain pressures up just a little bit. And then you see, like, see where it says vagus nerve diameters. Oh, yeah. That so yours was 0 0.8 and 1.2, and we'll look at what it was, you know, when you when you were here before. Mm -hmm. So the vagus nerves degenerated a little bit, uh, and then see here where it says it says this is the jugular vein diameters, mm -hmm. and see how like this is your left one, and it mm -hmm. says like 37, 30. Then you know you could see see one of them it says 82. Mm -hmm. So we, in other words, we put your neck in different, uh, different positions. Mm -hmm. So your le your left one, when it's fully open, the cross sectional area is eighty two, meaning it's mm -hmm. nine by nine. And your right one, see where one of these it says one twenty four. Yeah. So it just means you're a little bit right jugular vein dominant. So in other words, when you're mm -hmm. sleeping, your brain's draining preferentially on your right side. But you could clearly see by this that in many different neck positions, the jugular vein is closed. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll go over like exactly what's your best sleeping position, and when you're upright, what's going to be the best position of your neck. So, mm -hmm. give you an example. So me, I have a styloid on my right. So me, when I'm upright, if I am extended a little bit and maybe just look a little bit to the left then mm -hmm. my right jugular veins more open so sometimes it's not just don't look down or and instead look up because mm -hmm. let's be honest like most of us man we're just so yeah. addicted to the cell phone sometimes it actually is that you have to rotate your head a little bit you know just to you know basically based on your physiology and sometimes we forget that sleep is actually to cleanse and restore or mm -hmm. repair the brain. You know, because when you came, like that was one of your main things too. Mm -hmm. Like you were just, like you had said to me, the fatigue was like unbelievable. And that's yeah. right when you came like a few years ago, it was like all you could do is like lay down. Yeah. And did you feel like after the four visits you got all your brain function back or like 95%? Yeah. I'd say at least 95. Okay, and then now you're back. Has some of that dropped a little? Or you um, feel like that's still? Yeah, I'd say it's dropped a little. I've also noticed that um, while in school, um, it is a little harder to keep my focus. And like, I guess my stamina for like how like energetic I feel, usually like I'm at my peak, like first through like second period, you know, and it's a little downhill from there, like harder to concentrate because okay. um, my brain frog just kind of increases through the day. Can I ask you something? This is it really for my own benefit is mm -hmm. I had two teenagers as new patients this week. Mm -hmm. Then one of them, they couldn't even get through the treatment, even though I gave them medicines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they couldn't even get through the treatment. So 
the parents and the patient agrees I got to give them IV sedation to get through the treatment. Then I had another new patient who I gave her medicine, but man, it was even difficult to get her through it. Mm -hmm. You know, where, so I guess my question to you is, like, how did you do it? Like, you, you know, like, in other words, you were even younger, you were yeah. even younger than, than the one. So can you explain, like, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you you got through it. So is it, you know, because it is a painful procedure. Mm -hmm. I don't, I really don't think it was that remarkable. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that everyone, um, part of it is I do have a higher, a higher pain tolerance, but I think another part of it is really like your mentality, I guess. Um, if you, I just kind of get myself in a headspace where I'm just relaxed and I find it best to just kind of close your eyes and you just let all of your tension like go out. I like imagine it going out of like my fingertips kind of. Um, and then I know like you're fast, you're fast. It's not going to take more like than eight minutes really. Um, so if you just keep that in mind, it's temporary and it's going to, it's going to help you in the long run. Um, and I think that helps a lot, but I mean, it, it, it does, it's just, I think it's, it, it is a bit of a mind game, I guess, especially if you're someone who's, um, scared of needles. Um, it's better to just, just don't look, um, and try to relax yourself the best you can and it'll be over in like five minutes. No, I appreciate you saying that because I mean, honestly, I tried everything with the two people, and yeah, it was. They would, and, and it, it's you kind of nailed it on the head. It was I could tell they just like were afraid of shots, you know, for yeah. whatever reason. And no matter, it didn't matter what me or my staff did. It was very hard That's, to get them. It's really more the apprehension. Okay. That's the worst part. Okay. It's it's the waiting. Like, oh, is this going to hurt? Is this? And once you like can develop your own techniques to get over that, you know, it'll be a lot easier. So you're gonna, like probably in an hour, like once we get back to the room and everything, you're gonna get some prolotherapy, mm -hmm. then will you need anything? Will you need anything or you'll just do it? Like do, do we um, normally give you something, a medicine or nitrous oxide? It was Xanax, I forget the okay. dosage. Okay, so you took um, one yeah, Xanax. I, yeah, I don't okay. know And the that did it was. for you, that's all yeah, you needed. Yeah, that's okay. all I needed. Okay. Um, for re regularly, I didn't do numbing, um, but for the PRP, I did do the numbing, and I will say the PRP is definitely more painful, so even if you have a high pain tolerance, I would recommend doing the numbing for the PRP. Did you get the best results with that one, with the PRP, or you're not sure? I'm not sure, because at okay. that point, I was already doing okay. pretty good, but... Okay. And we just so much appreciate telling your story. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, because this is an important part of things. Mm -hmm.